Hi friends, welcome to Bird Dogs Afield and welcome also to Bird Dog Questions and Answers. This is number five in our series of Bird Dog Questions and Answers and we're with our good friends from Merrimeeting Kennel and that's Blaine and Patty Carter. Uh, as I've mentioned many times, these folks are outstanding trainers. Uh, Blaine has trained thousands of dogs, so is Patty. Uh, they know this game so well. And today, we're going to approach uh, a new question. And it's kind of a, a, not a pleasant word, but it's blinking. And tell me about blinking. How does it start? How does it finish? Can we cure it? You go. Thousands yeah. of dogs. I'm I, only at a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, actually, you taught me more about getting around this one than than anyone. Um, blink, blinking comes in many packages. You know, it's like, I, you know, the first thing anyone wants to do is bring, anything, any problem that comes up, they want to blame the breeder. But you know, it it, it comes through sensitivity. It it's overtraining usually and there's a dislike for a certain portion of the training and it equates into the pointing. And uh, usually blinking is a conflict between the dog's interest and the handler's interest and usually there can be some uh, confusion as to who's going to win that battle. And I think that um, the um, dog has his interest and then the handler says, by God, you're going to do it. I'm going to make you do it. May it be an e-collar, a long lead, or just your physical being. And all of a sudden, there's an objection occur in the nervous system that says, boy, I don't know if I like this one at all. I'm, okay, I'm staying away. I'm not going to get in trouble. I don't want to get there. I'm not going there. And I'm staying away. So there's been some negative pressure has to be to, to make that dog point and he has discovered that it's much easier just to blink in other words ignore the bird and go elsewhere well we see it you know in the training you see it in some of the like for the nav the guys that are going to the invitational they start over training a little bit then all of a sudden their honoring goes to the dickens, to the, dickens. the dog no longer wants to honor because he's starting to blink the honors now i'm not going in there because there's just too much trouble for me to be in there or there's nothing in it for me and there's no uh, yeah it, it, it is it for me yeah it, it it that's and you know what it, there isn't many pro anything that occurs within the nervous system of the animal the corrective action for it is is what he want to make something for him want to, more than what he's doing right so if i don't create something in this desire package i'm not going to get that dog. in other words well maybe the dog doesn't want to honor because he wants to steal that point well maybe in the training i maybe he needs to go in and steal some points to get the honor. Then I can say, uh-uh, you're gonna get the bird, but you need to, you don't need to go all the way into here, you only need to go with this far. And I can, I can back that off, and then eventually he starts banking, he's thinking the reward is that retrieve in most cases. I wanna get the bird, I don't wanna share the bird, or I don't, this is all kinds of little misconceptions. Now for a young dog coming to his pointing attitude, and you start seeing that circling, or that staying off, or, or he might get to get this aloof. <laughs> they are so aloof sometimes, like, I don't smell it or I don't see it. <laughs> so what you're talking about is the dog's reaction when it gets in the scent cone. Right. Uh, so you're saying circling is sort of the same issue as blinking? Uh, well, sometimes the they circle. They want to flush it. They want to flush right, it. Right. They want to take it out. Right, and then you start putting pressure on that circling. Nah, I'm not going near it. Right. Right. So you know, maybe pop traps, or, or I'm not going to give you an opportunity. The bird's going to leave you. Yeah, well, I don't want him to leave me. So if you get that thought, that could change that process. Uh, the dog that's fearful, I got to get him back in the game. He's so, not. He's not going to give up blinking. So this is a human-created issue. Oh. The dog has a latent 
probably in maybe nervous system issue like we discussed but you don't recognize it as a handler and you put too much pressure on the puppy and the puppy says mm, if i just ignore it you know i'm i'm not going to get in trouble that's right yeah so it's we do it so again we need to recognize it early yeah so how do you cure it chase you've often i'm right in the involvement of that right now with a dog i i do i cure it two ways one is this particular dog, anytime I say whoa, he, he used the e-collar to the whoa command. And the, what the owner? The owner. Yeah. And the dog associated that to the bird. So I did what I'm doing is I'm reteaching whoa, completely away from the birds. Still using an e-collar though? Nope. No. I'm not using I'm using my voice and my demeanor. Because I, I want to be able to touch. Yeah. I want to go in there and assure. I want to put trust back into the woe command, not to worry about it. Because it's the obedience that's causing the problem. So let's just do the obedience. So you woe. And I put a lot of body gesture in it and get him to, to understand it. And then I go in and touch him, let me in. Well, no. The dog, I noticed when I went to go, go to him, the dog would turn his butt to me. I said, no, you stand. No, it's okay for you to stand. It's okay for me to come in and touch, right? So I got the dog to understand that and, and start to trust me on that, right? Then I put birds out, but I put them out. I liber liberate them. He doesn't go to a planted bird. This is a liberated bird. This is a bird that's got a lot of flight into it. And what I've been doing is, is he goes, I'm going to take it out. Go ahead. But I'm, gonna, but I'm gonna woe you. You're not gonna chase. Nope, can't chase it, whoa. No, I'm gonna, no, whoa. And then when he stands, so I use that obedience portion to stop the chase and put the insurance into it. And then all of a sudden I see him, well, it took about three weeks. It did, and I was working, and once, one, I, the gentleman drops him off on a Thursday, and I give him back in the afternoon, and I do three sessions on a Thursday with this dog. It took three Thursdays to get to where I am right now. The other time, I uh, was, uh, he pointed, and I shot a bird for him. I mean, pointed, jacked it up, he was hard. Before that, I, he started circling. And did that say he went from blinking to circling? I mean, he really wants to take it out. It's the pressure that makes the blinking. So what I did was is I regressed the re regression that occurred. My my backtracking was I'm going through the progression in the other direction. And he he's and that's how I made the connection with this one. You know they they don't all come that way, but the. But it, it's all about trust, I believe. And it's about the ability to get in there. This isn't going to hurt you. Dude, we're going to have fun here. There, there's got to be some, something in there right. for them, for you the know? Yeah. And there's got to be something in you to give to them. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. And this is where Patty's been great for me because Patty's got a soft hand, a real soft and quiet demeanor. Me, I'm, I'm a rough kind of guy, you know? I, I, I kind of... <laughs> For me to, to to put the gentleness into it takes a little effort. Well, there's a good balance then. Yeah. Between Patty's softness and your hardness. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you concur with all? What? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You and you know, I think, like we've said about all this stuff, you have to recognize the issue, and go around the barn in a different, <clears throat> excuse me, a different direction to find the cure. You know, the cure isn't always like you read about or you, you ask questions about. Sometimes you have to invent your own, oh, you know, geez, desire yes. building exercises. I would take her out and I'd just throw pigeons in front of her and plant a few pigeons. And it became yeah. a positive yeah. event, taking away the negativity of, of the, the bird and, and the wish to go in and get it. She, she had high drive on that. And, she's and, she's, and she started understanding pleasure. Yeah. yeah. And now, I mean. the pleasure of it. You know, she loves him. You know, you know, she can't wait because he's her entertainment now. Yeah. 
and, and you know, it's, it's a wonderful yeah. relationship. So. You know, and I have to be careful. You know, we sit in these, in these discussions, honestly, and this isn't the, every dog is different. Yeah. They're put together different. They're no different than you are from me, than you are to me, or, or whoever, any of you out there. I'm not saying that what I'm doing is the only way, and anyone that tells you about dog training, do you have to do this? You want to you want to be careful, yeah, because it isn't an absolute. Yeah, these animals are all different. You right. just need to understand your animal. Right. Yeah, and he has a great ability to recognize the temperament and adjust the training to the temperament of a dog in every facet of training, from the little puppy to the adult dog. Yeah. You know, you, you can't train them all the same way. You know, you're They're just going to... No. Oh, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah. You yeah. have the blockheads that, you know, the old two-by-four stories. <laughs> but, yeah, and you have to train that dog way differently than that gun-sensitive, blinking, you know, dog like that. So, yeah. yeah, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, uh, Patty and Blaine. Uh, it's just, it's a treat for me to sit here and listen to you folks talk. And, well, we all and, continue to learn from yeah, each other. Yeah, we do. Yeah. It's, a, it's a learning process for everyone. It is. And, it uh, really is. I'm so thankful that uh, you've been such a great resource for Bird Dogs Afield and myself. And, and thank you. You're welcome. And uh, we'll look forward to doing this again. Okay. Thank, thank you. Home. Thank you. Thank everybody. <laughs> That's good. I think those are great. Bird Dogs Afield, presented by Native Performance Dog Food, and brought to you in part by Mud River Dog Products, Pete Shoe Dryer, and Thoroughgood Footwear.